Hello and welcome. This is the Western AC, AC Virtual College Fair, and we are excited that you've joined us today. Uh, if you have questions throughout the presentation, by all means, use the Q&A at the bottom of the page. Uh, we will certainly answer those questions as they come in, and you can address them to all of the panelists or to a specific school. As this is a webinar, your camera and your microphone are off, so you can't raise your hand or you know wave or anything. You really have to use that Q&A button. Today's format is a six by six, so each institution will have six minutes to present. So you can look forward to that. And certainly while this is the last session today, there will be another iteration of this college fair in April, and you are more than welcome to sign up for those sessions when that registration opens. Finally, we are recording this session as well as all of the other sessions that were offered today and are going on right now. So if there are any schools that you missed, wanted to see, by all means, go back to strivescan.com slash WACAC and view the sessions that you would like. So today, uh, originally scheduled to go first was Texas A&M at Galveston. Unfortunately, they could not be with us today. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with Allie from Texas Christian University. Thanks, Julie. Welcome, everyone. I hope you all are having a great weekend. Thank you for joining us. And my name is Ali Kavidra, and I am with Texas Christian University, also known as TCU. We are located in the great state of Texas, and in, in the city of Fort Worth, to be exact. Fort Worth is actually the 13th largest city in the United States, so we are a large metropolitan area right next to Dallas, Texas, and Dallas and Fort Worth make up what we call the Metroplex, and we're the fourth largest metropolitan area in the US. So if you've thought about going to college in Texas, but maybe you're looking for a little bit more of a metropolitan experience, and we could be a really great fit for you. So while we are in a large metropolitan area, TCU itself is actually not a huge school. We're more of a medium-sized school with about 9,500 undergraduates and about 1,000 additional graduate students. So you're definitely gonna know your professors, 13 to one student to professor ratio. And uh, our classes are average about 27 students. We do not have any large lecture halls. So if you've ever you know, had friends or maybe your siblings that have gone to college and talked about these big lecture hall classes of hundreds of students, those don't exist at TCU with our size of the school. So you really do get to have those smaller classes. And along with that Texas experience, you really are going to get that true college experience at TCU. We have over 115 majors, definitely most well known for our Neely School of Business. So lots of great business majors like accounting and finance, entrepreneurship. And we also have a nursing program, a direct entry nursing school, great engineering sciences. And we do have a medical school that was opened up two years ago. So if you're looking to be a pre-med student, definitely can help you there. Over three quarters of our students that apply to medical school were admitted last year. So definitely a high acceptance rate there. We are also known for our dorms. The Princeton Review ranked us number three in the nation for best college dorms. So they are pretty fancy, definitely nicer than any apartment you would live in and after college. And they've all been renovated and updated in the last 10 years. Fraternities and sororities are really popular at TCU with over 50% of our students involved in a fraternity or sorority. And we do have those houses on campus and those houses are brand new as well. Instead of completely renovating them, we actually tore them down and built brand new ones. About half of our students are from outside of Texas. So if you're someone from California, definitely about 20% of our students are from California. So you will be in company with other Californians. You're not gonna be all alone, and we're definitely not a commuter school. We are that traditional college experience where you live on campus for at least your first two years. That last experience you're gonna get is that TCU experience. We are division one in the Big 12 athletic conference and football games, a lot of fun to go to, baseball, volleyball, basketball, lots of different sports. And as a student, you get to go for free. So you don't have to pay anything extra to participate in that. We also are kind of known for having a, a kind of funny mascot. So it's the horned frog, which is kind of unusual, but um, definitely memorable. 
And when it comes to admission, we have two deadlines. We have our early action, early decision deadline, November 1, and regular decision of February 1. And so definitely apply your senior year by February 1 at the latest, and then you have until May 1 to decide where you want to attend. Our admissions process is very holistic, meaning that we look at all aspects of your application. We are not just gonna look at your grades and test scores. We really wanna to get to know you, your character, what you've been involved in in high school, and, and also see those letters of recommendation in your essay. So it is a little bit of everything that we are looking at in your admission review. We have about a 45% acceptance rate. So we are considered a competitive university to get into. And that's why we do look at those other factors other than grades and test scores. We are also test optional. So we do not require the SAT or the ACT. And that continues on this next year. Scholarships, you're automatically going to be considered for all academic scholarships when you apply for admission. Um, and those scholarships range from $12,000 a year all the way up to a full tuition scholarship. And we do not need test scores to be considered for scholarships. We always encourage students to apply for financial aid as we can definitely give you more financial aid above just academic scholarships. And over 85% of our students last year did qualify for financial aid. That really helps reduce the cost of attendance. So thank you so much for learning more about TCU. And the way we end everything at TCU is we say, go frogs. So make a peace sign and curl it and make it fierce. And that is saying, go frogs. Have a great evening, you guys. Well, thank you so much. Our next presenter is from Trinity University. Take it away, Nicole. Thank you so much and good afternoon. So glad that you all could be here with us this evening. My name is Nicole Fredo Garcia. I'm the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions here at Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. So just a few hours south of our friends uh, TCU up in Fort Worth. I'm going to take you through five um, distinctions so that you have sort of an idea of what sets Trinity apart, maybe from some of the other institutions that you are considering. So first is our size. We are a smaller institution. So if you're looking for those one-on-one -on -one connections with your faculty, small class sizes, a school like Trinity might be a good fit for you. So about 2,500 students undergrad, and we are primarily an undergraduate institution. So we have a few graduate programs, but most of our resources and the way that we're set up is geared towards the undergraduate experience. There are no teaching assistants in any of our classes at Trinity. And so you're able to really learn from those experts in the field, right? The, the, the top-notch people in your discipline. In addition to that, I want to talk a little bit about our, our curriculum. So at Trinity, when you apply to Trinity, you're automatically considered for all of our areas. So there's no program-based admissions. Once you're in, you're into anything, whether that's the School of Business or the engineering program or the Spanish program, right? And so if you come in on day one and you know exactly what you wanna study, that's great. You can start off in that area. However, if you're like many of our students and you're a little bit unsure, or you have a lot of different passions, you're really able to explore a curriculum and then you don't have to declare your major until the end of your second year at Trinity. And the way our curriculum is designed also allows a lot of flexibility in doing things like double majoring or having a major and a minor in completely different disciplines. Um, for example, my, my degrees from Trinity are in finance and religion. So you're really able to explore and um, figure out what it is that you're interested in. Uh, the third distinction is the resources we have here at Trinity. We have one of the largest endowments per capita in the country, and that comes to play in several ways. So one is the way that we're able to fund our students through scholarships and financial aid. You also see that physically on our campus. So in terms of buildings and, and similar to TCU, right, our residence halls are each, a different one is renovated each year. We want to make sure that as a resident residential campus, you're comfortable on campus and, and not living in a building that's as old as the university is. Um, but that also means plugging in resources for um, internship opportunities, undergraduate research, other physical buildings on campus. So right now, where our School of Business is housed and our humanities wings um, are all being renovated. And so you see that sort of physical transformation as well in terms of the resources. 
Uh, the fourth distinction is the city that we're located. So a lot of liberal arts schools are located um, in the middle of nowhere, which might be really attractive to you, but a lot of our students are attracted to this piece, which is that we are in the seventh largest city in the country. Uh, San Antonio is definitely one of the reasons that I was attracted to Trinity. It's incredibly vibrant, has this really rich culture, um, this sort of interesting history with um, Mexican American culture, the German culture, and you really see a lot of um, blended experiences here in the city and our students engage of course in a lot of different ways so whether that be through community service or experiential learning opportunities it's really easy for students to have an internship say in the morning in the city downtown and then come back to campus five minutes away and go to a class at 12 30. so they're able to have that experience of living in a big city but also having that communal experience of the campus as well and then the last piece is the diversity of our student body population and i and i use that word very broadly so we attract students from all different racial backgrounds, religious beliefs, um, socioeconomic classes, you'll see sort of the geographic diversity here as well. And that really is what makes our campus culture what it is, one of collaboration and open-mindedness and curiosity. And, and you'll see that when you come to visit campus as well. So if any of this sort of piques your interest, um, I hope that you'll consider applying as a senior. You'll see our deadlines here as well. We there's several ways you can apply to Trinity. We're a Common App School, Coalition School, and also Apply Texas if you're if you're just applying in Texas schools. But it's free to apply to Trinity. We are also test optional at least for the next two years. And um, similar to TCU, when you apply to Trinity, you're automatically considered for those merit scholarships, and those are also test optional as well. So I'm happy to work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis to decide if that's the route that you might want to go. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Our campus is open for visitors as well, so you can check out those options online and feel free to um, chat any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. Um, just as a reminder, if you have questions for any of the panelists, by all means, drop those in the Q&A. I'm very happy to say that our representative from Texas A&M University at Galveston is here and she is going to go next. Howdy everyone, give me one second. Let me share my screen real quick. All righty. There we go. Howdy everyone. My name is Rosella. I'm one of the admissions counselors for Texas A&M University at Galveston. And here we, let's get started. Texas A&M University at Galveston is the ocean oriented branch of Texas A&M University, which is our main campus located in College Station. It's, we're the exact same school, same Aggie colors, same Aggie ring. I would show off my ring, but I forgot it in my purse. Um, same diploma where you'll graduate with Texas A&M University, not at anywhere. We educate about 2200 undergrad and graduate students uh, here on our campus. That also includes uh, very marine and maritime programs. We are home of the Texas A&M Maritime Academy, uh, which we train up to 400 plus cadets annually for their maritime service and employment around the world. A quick overview of our campus. We're fairly small compared to a lot of other universities, um, which makes things easier to get from one class to the other. Since we are such a small campus, we have a 16 to one student to teacher ratio. So you get that one one-on-one -on -one with your professors. I'm actually a former graduate from this school. I graduated to class of 2018 with my bachelor's degree in marine biology. Woo so pretty, pretty proud of that. And one of my biggest classes about 20, 20 to 30 students. So it's fairly small. Some of our degree programs. Here on our campus, we have about nine un, uh, undergrad and four graduate programs, all based at marine based. So anything that has to do with around the ocean and its industries. So from marine biology to marine engineering and technologies to maritime business to uh, oceans and one health. We also have minors here on our campus as well. Since we are connected uh, with College Station, we do have minors along with them as well. These are some of our most uh, popular minors here on our campus. These are specific to our campus. So our most popular minor is Diving Technologies and Methods, which is our scuba diving degree where students can get their scuba diving certification. Texas A&M Maritime Academy. So the Texas A&M Maritime, ooh, 
The Texas A&M Maritime Academy, so those are the students who are interested in going into the Marine Transportation Program or the Licensing Option Program. Um, you have to apply through, apply once you submit your application through Apply Texas, you have to submit a separate application along with it. All that information is on our website as well. And if you have any questions, feel free to get in contact with us for that. Admissions here on our campus. So the admissions applications is through Apply Texas um, to our campus. There is two apl separate applications, one for College Station and one for Galveston. So if you are interested in any of our programs, you can sign up for our programs. Um, essay topic A is the only one we're looking for. Um, make it as personal as you can. Talk about your interests, uh, what inspired you to become, uh, or what inspired you to go into the major you're going into, uh, or to come to our campus. Um, I wrote about the giant squid and sharks on my essay, so those were my passions coming in. Um, the essay is definitely a way to tell the student's story. It's for us to get to know the student as a whole. Uh, do the application fee of $75, official high school transcript that includes your graduating year and your class rank. SAT and, SA, SAT and ACT scores are optional, um, especially for spring and fall 2021. We're not sure about class uh, for, uh, for next year's. Uh, hopefully we will be back going back to normal, but that will be updated on our website later on. Um, high school requirements, four years of English, four years of math. That includes advanced mathematic, mathematics like calculus and pre-cal and trigonometry. Four years of science and two years of the same foreign language. These are the deadlines. These are some of our harder deadlines for the freshman applications. So the final deadline is May 1st. So that is coming up for fall of 2021. Um, the ocean engineering program, which is offered through College Station. Um, but if you want to apply to our campus, um, their deadline is kind of hard, it's a hard deadline as in December 1st. The transfer application is the exact same thing for our campus. So you apply through Apply Texas as a transfer student. You must have a minimum of 24 transferable credit hours and a GPA of a 2.5. Same application process. Every student's on a holistic review. So we look at everything that's submitted to us. These are the deadlines for transfer applications. These are the cost of attendance. This is all based out of 15 undergraduate credit hours. All of this can change when you're a student here, uh, depending on what major you're going into, uh, how many hours you're taking, everything else. This is all based out of surveys that we've done here on our campus from students. So all of this can change when you're a student here. But if you have questions about this, feel free to get in contact with me. We do have scholarships. Uh, we do have a scholarship on Apply Texas. So when you sign up, when you submit your application through Apply Texas, there's a separate application for scholarships. Priority deadline is December 1st. FAFSA submission is strongly encouraged when doing these, uh, these scholarships. It can be awarded from any areas, including academic strength or demonstrate leadership. It can range from $1,000 to $10,000. For a complete list of our scholarships, you can also visit our website at tanmag.edu backwards slash scholarships. If you have any questions, feel free to get in contact with us. Um, these are This is our contact information, our 409-4414 number and the admissions email. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks and giggle. Outstanding, thank you. Our next presenter is from Oklahoma State University. Hello, hello. Let me share my screen real quick and we will get started. All right, so I am Caitlin Middleton and I am the admissions counselor with Oklahoma State. So let's hop right in. If it will go. Here we go. So we are located in Stillwater, Oklahoma, which is a small, typical college town. Um, it is a small town that is kind of centered around the university. So you are going to get that college town feel. Stillwater is located in between Tulsa and OKC. We're about uh, 60 miles from each metropolitan area. And we do have a regional airport here. And then we also have airports in Tulsa and Oklahoma City. So if you're interested in flying back, that is definitely a convenience that we have here for you. So Oklahoma State has about 22,000 undergraduate students. So we are considered a mid-sized university. Of those students, 26% come from out of state. So you will not be alone in being an out of state student. We represent all 50 states and over 100 countries with our student body. So we do have a diverse representation of students with geographics, um, socioeconomic status, 
all different kinds of people represented here. Um, we are a land grant institution. So what that means is that we were granted this land by the Oklahoma government um, many, many years ago. And basically what that means for you is that there are just more opportunities for scholarships and for uh, research at an undergraduate level. So we are a nationally ranked uh, research institution. And so if you are interested in getting some of that hands-on learning and research um, at, in an undergraduate level, then this is for you. We have over 200 majors across five academic colleges. Um, some of our most popular majors are hospitality and tourism management, um, professional pilot, and then interior design and design merchandising. So those are some of the majors that are kind of unique to Oklahoma State. And something cool about um, our majors and our degree plans is that you can add professional um, degree plans to anything. So if you want to go pre-law, pre-vet, pre-med, um, whatever the case may be, you can add that on to your major. You, For instance, you don't have to be an animal science major to go pre-vet. You can add that to anything and still get those prereqs to then go on to vet school. So I'm going to talk about Ferguson College of Ag. So this is one of our most popular academic colleges here at Oklahoma State, and it is because we are the only vet school in the state of Oklahoma. So we actually have a small and large animal hospital here on campus. Like I said, you will get that hands on um, learning as an undergraduate student. That is just one of the many um, outstanding degrees in our College of Ag. Um, we do have an early admittance program into our vet school, so if you're interested in that, please reach out to me and I'd be happy to tell you about that. Another one of our most popular colleges here is the College of Engineering, Architecture, and Technology. So at the bottom hand corner, you will see our Endeavor Lab. So this is a building that is full of nothing but labs for undergraduate students. This is full of wind tunnels, um, water tunnels, 3D printers, computers, all different kinds of labs that are just for undergraduate students to get that hands-on learning. Um, our College of Engineering is uh, paired with a lot of companies. So we have a great placement rate out of college. So if you're interested in that, let me know. So our application, if you are a junior, will open July 1st. Um, if you're a senior, it's already open. You will apply on our website at okstate.edu. We are not on Common App, and that is because your application for the university will double as your application for scholarships. So we'll just need your application, an official high school transcript that can be emailed, sent through parchment, whatever the case may be. Um, ACT or SAT test scores, we are test optional for fall of 2021. We are waiting to figure out what is going to happen for fall 2022 and moving forward. So stay tuned for that. And then a $40 non-refundable application fee or fee waiver. So if you're interested in what uh, accounts as a fee waiver, please let me know. So that's going to be your application to the university. For scholarships, it's pretty streamlined, simple. That way you get the most opportunity as possible. Um, we require two short essays and a leadership and involvement resume. So the essays, we give you the prompts, you pick two to write about. And then the leadership component is going to entail everything that you've done from your freshman year to your senior year of high school, um, any groups, organizations, awards, things like that. We have two different ways to be admitted to Oklahoma State. We have comprehensive review, which just means that we're going to look at everything you submit, not just test score and GPA. And then we have our assured admission. So I like to say that this is a good benchmark. You'll see um, if, if you meet the benchmark, if not, you will go through comprehensive review. And so if you meet one of these three criteria, you are guaranteed to be admitted to Oklahoma State. We have several different scholarship opportunities. We have assured scholarships and then academic competitive. So the academic competitive is going to be based on the essays and the leadership and involvement resume I talked about. And then the assured is going to be based off of test score and GPA. So this is our assured scholarship, just like assured admissions. If you meet this criteria, then you are guaranteed to get this scholarship. So if you have a 3.0 unweighted GPA and a 24, you are gonna get $10,000 per year for four years. Um, we have several different things to be a part of here at Oklahoma City, so check those out on our website. And we are home to America's Greatest Homecoming. I'm going to keep going. We do have daily campus tours, so you can come visit us any day of the week or do a virtual tour on, camp or on our website. And then here's my information. If you have any other questions, please reach out to me, and thank you for having me tonight.
Thanks so much, Caitlin. We appreciate it. Thank you. Next, we'll have Melissa from Paul Quinn College. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, great. Um, so I'm sharing the Paul Quinn um, screen, right? Okay, perfect. So my name is Melissa Orozco. I'm an enrollment management officer at Paul Quinn College. A um, little bit about the history of Paul Quinn College. We were founded in 1872 in Austin, Texas. We are an HBCU. We are founded by a group of African Methodist Episcopal preachers. Um, and the purpose was to educate freed slaves and their offspring. So we were only located there for five years and we relocated to Waco, Texas and renamed Waco College. At the time we were primarily a practical school um, teaching carpentry um, and practical work skills. We were located there for a little bit over a hundred years and we relocated to Dallas, Texas primarily because of economic opportunity. And in 2021, we are still located in Dallas, Texas. Um, we have gained new leadership in 2007. President Michael Sorrell joined our institution. and He's brought a lot of transformative change with that being that we are the first urban work college. And I'll talk a little bit about what it means to be a work college in a further slide. Um, our guiding principles are leave places better than you found them, lead, a, lead from wherever you are, live a life that matters, love something greater than yourself. So in the work that we do and our work with our students, staff, and faculty, we instill these principles and our community advocacy. Our institutional is we over me, which means that we um, put the needs over the needs of the community over the wants of the individual. And this is seen in our we over me farm in 2007. In 2010, we were recognized as a as a food desert, which means that there wasn't a grocery store in a five mile radius from our campus. And at the time we had an unused football field. So what President Michael Sorrell decided to do is convert the football field field into a farm, which our students completely, completely operate, um, the farmer's market, um, the operation of the farm, and we donate um, a lot of the produce that we harvest. We've donated over 30,000 um, pounds. So it's a great way to show how we practice and we put the needs of the community over our own. Okay, so our urban work college, as I mentioned previously, we are an urban work college. What that means is that our students um, are learning in the classroom, but they're also taking what they're learning into real work experience. Um, so our students are required to work if they live on campus. What that looks like is that their first and second year, they can work on with one of our departments, such as financial aid, um, admissions, maybe our student services, and they get a tuition stipend, which reduces their cost of school, which is our goal, right, to reduce student debt. Um, their third and fourth year, once you're a little bit more seasoned in the workforce, you can you can participate in our corporate work program and have an internship with one of our corporate work partners. One of our most common um, corporate work partners is J.P. Morgan Chase. What's really cool about this is that they give students up to ten thousand to fifteen thousand academic academic year just for interning with one of our corporations. And the way that I explain it to students is that by the time that you graduate Paul Quinn College, you'll graduate with a bachelor's degree, um, but you'll also graduate with a resume, which will put you ahead of other students, right? Because nowadays job recruiters want recent grads with job experience. And our Urban Scholar Program, so it's a new program that we have at Paul Quinn College, is an accelerated program to um, get your degree in three years instead of four. What's really cool is that we have two paths. You can do it fully online, which works for adult and non-traditional students. You can be in the state of California and getting your degree if you're part of this program because it's fully online, or, those, or for those that want the on-campus experience, we also have that option. Um, currently, we offer business administration and public policy and two new majors, which include computer science and social sciences. Okay, so our academic programs, our most popular is business administration. We have four concentrations, which include accounting, entrepreneurship, fundraising, and philanthropy and management. Um, so you can be in this major and then also be part of our corporate work program. So what you're learning in the classroom, you're taking it into the corporate world. For example, one of our recent alumni had an internship with JP Morgan Chase and she was offered a full-time position before she even graduated. Those are, the, those are the type of opportunities that you'll get at Paul Quinn College. We also have health and wellness, legal studies and criminology, religious studies, liberal arts, which with those five um, concentrations. And then we have um, liberal arts path to teacher certification if you're interested in being a teacher to uh, middle school education. 
So Campus Life, um, our school is fairly small. We have around 400 to 500 students. However, that helps you make connections with your professors because the teacher to student ratio is fairly small. We have over 46 organizations on campus. Unfortunately, right now they are not active, but we have Greek Life and we have Math Club, Cheer. Um, and if we don't have an organization that you would like to have on campus, our students have the agency to be founding fathers of our, of our organization. So we'll give you the power to do that. Our admission process, we do require a minimum GPA of 2.75 on a 4.0 scale. Or the admission documents that we require are your official transcripts, a letter of recommendation, a resume, and a phone interview. The reason why we have a phone interview is, is because maybe you are below a 2.75. Right, but we want to offer a holistic review of your application right so sometimes speaking to the student numbers don't really show what a student can bring to the college, so the phone interview will allow you to show us that. Um, our applications are completely free and we are test optional which they can be accessed at that link or on our website. And financial aid. So for the seniors that are applying for next year, you would um, be asked for 2019 tax information. Completing a FAFSA is highly encouraged because this is how you would get access to Pell Grants, federal loans, and institutional scholarships. And then this is my contact information. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you so much. And last but not least, we have Kyle from Langston University. Hello, everybody. I'm Kyle Gregory. I'm a proud 2009 graduate of Langston University. I studied English, went to law school afterwards, marched in the band, played trombone. Shout out to the Marching Pride. And I also was captain of the Quiz Bowl team. And now I've come to give back to the university. I'm the senior recruiter, and I also am the advisor for the Quiz Bowl team. So if you're fast on the buzzer, come join us. With that being said, Langston University has been around basically, basically breaking down barriers to act to access for education since before Oklahoma was even a state. We're the only historically black college in our state and we're just about the closest HBCU to the West Coast period. We have 1,750 undergraduate students who come from 38 states. And because we are one of the closest historically black colleges to the West, we get a lot of students from California. We get students from Nevada, Seattle. You won't be the only one out here. So we are also an 1890 land grant institution, average GPA is a 2.99, and we have an 11 to 1 student to teacher ratio. Housing wise, you get your own private room from the start. So when you flip over, you don't have to have anybody staring you in the face first thing when you wake up. Um, we also have housing for people who are married or have kids. So we have a two bedroom apartment that you get to yourself in that instance. And our honor students who are upperclassmen also get to stay there. That's a two bedroom apartment called the Commons. And then you see Scholars Inn posted here, full size bed, big living room. You get the whole package at Langston. And then if you want to save money, Young Hall's the bottom dollar housing, although it's the biggest private room on campus. We have free tutoring in every class, which means if you make good grades, you can get paid to be the tutor. We have over 40 organizations on our campus. And if we don't have what you want, like these other colleges said, you can start it here with eight people. Our Greek life is vibrant. You can start applying for that and the Divine Nine starting your sophomore year with a 2.5 grade point average or higher. We are home to the largest uh, collection of African and African American literature and artifacts in the state of Oklahoma in our Melvin B. Tolson Black Heritage Center. And what I love talking about Langston about with you is this, we have elite internships. Think about this, if you want to go to medical school, did you know that Langston University has a partnership with Harvard Medical School? We send students to Harvard, to Yale, to Stanford, to all these large institutions whose sticker price is over 70,000, you get that experience free here at Langston. And you don't have just a lot of numbers in your major to compete with you with. So think about it like this, elite internship competing with 15 people in your major versus a larger school where you might be competing with 500 people in your major. A few other elite internships we have to offer are on campus. We have one of the best animal science undergraduate programs, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But we also have been working on the Mars landing. When human beings land on Mars, our Langston University students are going to be able to say, I played a role in that. And our homecoming is incredible. The students choose the entertainment. Uh, recent selections include the Migos, Young Thug, Genuine for the old school, Ty Tribbett, Travis Green, Fred Hammond, DC Young Fly, and I could go on for a while. Six schools of study to choose from in our doctoral program of physical therapy, which we were the first one in the state of Oklahoma to have an accredited doctoral doctoral program. We have a 100% graduation rate and a 100% job placement rate. In 
In fact, Charles Loftus, one of our recent, recent graduates, was highlighted at the NBA All-Star Game for working with the Portland Trailblazers. Um, we're also home to the number one ranked HBCU nursing program for the third year in a row, and we're ranked 27th out of 850 programs, and we're just about the most affordable BSN program in the nation. We're also leading the world in small ruminant animal research. So that's typically goats and sheep. We have our home to the Iquica de la Garza Goat Research Institute, and there's no other institute like it in the nation. These are our schools of our different majors that you can choose within our schools of study. These are just the undergraduate ones. A few to highlight include rehabilitation services where we've been breaking ground on helping people get better. We also have that as a master's degree in real rehabilitation counseling and they just got a five and a half million dollar grant. Computer science is the highest paying bachelor's degree on campus. If you graduate from that school, you'll find a good job. And you can see the other majors here for yourself, but I will highlight accounting. We produce more accountants per capita than any other school in the state of Oklahoma. If you've never been to a historically black college football game, you're missing out. We've won our conference three years in a row. We've got a 300 piece band coming in the fall, which is incredible. We've grown from 45 members to 210 in two years, and we're set to be at 300 for the fall. And that's because they get their out of state fees waived. So do students with a 3.0 or above. So if you're from California, you can play Oklahoma prices, one of the most affordable in the nation. And we're already the lowest price tuition of any university in Oklahoma, any four year university. You can attend Langston for less than 15,000 a year for tuition fees, room and board and your books or 17,195 in a private room. And now stop what you're doing. Listen to this part if you listen to nothing else. The Edwin P. McCabe Scholarship starts at a 3.5 GPA and a 22 ACT or 1100 SAT. This can pay for your entire college, one of the most accessible full rides in the nation. Then the Regent Scholarship starts at a 3.3 GPA and it's test optional now. And then the Thurgood Marshall College Fund is a partner to public HBCUs. They have internships with Apple that pay $25,000, the NBA, the NHL, and they have 17 scholarships posted right now if you're looking at public historically black colleges. Google the USDA 1890, it's a four year full ride at 1890 land grant institutions that are HBCUs, which we are, and then we, wave out of state fees at a 3.0 and have other scholarships starting at a 2.5 grade point average. Uh, as we're coming to a close, we need a 2.4 grade point average to get into the school. Our application's always free. And I'm Kyle Gregory. If you reach out to me, we have a scholarship waiting for you as soon as you're a senior, as long as you can show proof of a 2.5 grade point average. Thank you for listening. And we look forward to seeing your application when you're a senior. Well, thanks, Kyle. Um, if I could have everybody turn their cameras and their microphones back on, we're going to do a quick round robin. Um, I would love to know from all of you, and we're going to go in the same order in which you presented, I would love to know from all of you, what is your favorite tradition or place on your campus? So we'll start with Allie. Okay, my favorite tradition, I love holidays. I don't know if anyone else loves holidays, but we have a really cool Christmas tree lighting display on campus around the holidays and in December. And so we celebrate Christmas. There's a big Christmas tree that we put in the middle of our campus commons, lights and ornaments. And we have this big evening where there's um, fireworks and carolers and hot chocolate and cookies and people's families come and TCU students are there and it's it's really cool so if you love the holidays definitely the Christmas tree lighting ceremony in December at TCU all right Nicole how about at Trinity thanks Julie so at Trinity um, my personal favorite is the birthday dunk so on the eve of your birthday you are taken to the fountain which is on upper campus uh, usually around midnight and your your sweet mates and your hall mates um, run around the fountain singing happy birthday and dunk you in. And if they're kind enough, they'll help pull you back up out of the water. So it normally open, only happens to you your first year, but it is one of my favorites. Rosa, how about at Texas A&M at Galveston? 
Well, if you see behind me, this is OCSB or the Ocean Coastal Studies Building, which is my personal favorite building. That's where I spent a good 75% of my time in there for my marine biology degree. And if you were to face the other direction, you'll see the boat basin, which is where we house a lot of our, our ships, um, our boats that we use for a lot of our uh, classes for the ocean sciences and the non-ocean science programs when they do go out into the field collecting samples, um, treading nets. It's really fun. And if students do like fish the student ID is actually the fishing license. Um, this building also has, uh, we do have an FDA certified uh, seafood safety lab. So if you like oysters, you can definitely count on our island to have some of the best and safest oysters to eat. <laughs> Caitlin, how about at Oklahoma State? Yeah, so my favorite tradition is um, our bedlam tradition. So it's just this huge rivalry between OSU and OU. Um, any game where we play OU, the whole town goes crazy. All the alumni will come back for it. And um, we usually don't win in football, but we did beat them twice in a row in basketball this year. So I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> Melissa, how about it, Paul Quinn? Hi, Julie. Um, well, I just joined Paul Quinn College during during remote, um, during the pandemic. So I haven't been able to experience any of the traditions in person, um, but I am excited about homecoming week because that's when we have the coronation of Miss Paul Quinn College, which is a tradition that goes back many years. So I am excited to be part of that once things are a little bit more, you know, back to normal. I think we're all waiting to be back to normal. How about you, Kyle? What's your favorite tradition at Langston? I'll echo Melissa, the HBCU homecomings are spectacular if you've never been to one. We grow from a school of about 1,750 undergraduates to about 40,000 on homecoming day and they come from all over the West Coast out to Oklahoma. I've listed the artists already, but it's a whole week experience and it's incredible. Awesome. Well, thank you all for such great information and for sharing those little tidbits about the institutions. If our participants have any questions at this point, certainly this is a great time to do it, but I am going to leave you with a few things and um, then we will get you off into your day. So thanks again for joining us for learning about these schools. When you close your window, there will be a quick survey that pops up. So just four quick questions. If you could take a moment, answer those, help us improve our programming for future students and maybe for you again. Um, while today's fair is over, there are going to be more sessions in April. So that registration will open soon. So watch your email. And certainly if you want to review this session or uh, look at any of the other sessions that you may have missed, just go to strivescan.com slash WACAC, W-A-C-A-C. And so that is what we have. Thank you all for joining us and have a great day.